It is the Patrick Netherton Show, 1130 The Tiger. We are pleased to be joined now by one of the great coaches and now a tremendous broadcaster for CBS. He is Steve Lapis, working with Andrew Catalan all throughout the NCAA tournament. Had, uh, had a couple of nice games in there as well, which is what you always want, especially that uh, Gonzaga-Memphis game. Lap, how are you, brother? I'm doing great, Pat. How's it going? Man, it is fantastic. Uh, kind of give us an idea of what's happening this week, man. Are you are you going to New Orleans? You staying home? What are you what are you getting up to? Oh no, we're in New Orleans. We have our studio shows uh, at CBS Sports Network on Friday. We do a big practice show at the open practices from eleven uh, from noon to four p.m. Eastern time. From the Reese's game, I'm doing the Reese's game with Tom McCarthy and Chris Walker for nice. the All Star game. Right after that, and then Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we have a, a site there at the uh, uh, in New Orleans to do a studio shows. So we're going to be busy all weekend. Yeah, well, uh, that, well that was our life. Like uh, what nine years ago now, I think that was back in the day when we were actually uh, you know allowed to. We didn't have to pay for our hotels. Let's just put it to you that way, Lap. That was <laughs> yeah. that was that was the nicest thing. Hey, uh, give us an idea of kind of what you've seen. Obviously, one of uh, a group you're close to is is in the Final Four, but it is as as sort of blue blood as blue blood gets in the Final Four between Kansas, North Carolina, and Duke, and then obviously Nova is sort of that that next blue blood tier. Um, what do you make of this Final Four, and and are you somewhat surprised at at how blue bloody it is? Well, it's the first Final Four ever where all four teams have won multiple national championships. Mm-hmm. So let's start there. So that says something right there. And and I know you know people may not look at Villanova in the North Carolina, Duke, Kansas category. I get that. But I will tell you this. They're about as close as you could possibly come right now, if not being in that category. So I, in my opinion, we do have four blue bloods there four of the greatest programs. And, and and you know what? Even before, I mean, Jay's won two in the last six years. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this program had won one before. This program had been to multiple Final Fours. It's been a, it's a proud program for a long time. So that being said, um, you know, I guess Carolina's a bit of a surprise, even though when you saw how they were playing at the end of the year, I mean, I said it when the brackets came out. I said, Baylor's got the toughest road, you know, because they had to go through North Carolina and, supposedly go through Kentucky, which never happened. Right. Um, but that bracket, you know, when you think of Carolina as an eight seed with the talent that they have, yeah, that was definitely a tough a, a tough goal. Yeah. But, uh, they, I guess you put them in the surprise category, but in a, in a lot of ways not because they are talented. The biggest surprise to me, Lap, is that Carolina and Duke have never played in the tournament. And I was, I was explaining, I did the mock selection committee several years ago, um, and I was explaining that, look, the bracketing principles are such where – conference teams aren't allowed to meet each other until after the Sweet 16. So it, it makes sense. But at the same time, I would have thought somewhere along the way these two programs would have met. That's, to me, as shocking as anything in this tournament. Pat, how, how can it be possible that two programs that have been in the NCAA that much, we're not talking about a team that's been in 10 NCAA tournaments. We're talking about two of the most prolific NCAA tournament teams ever. The fact that they've never yeah. met. In an, in an elite eight game is mind boggling yeah. to me. I got to be and 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 before we heard that, if you told me, well, what do you think? I said, ah, they must have played two or three times. Yeah, that's, that's what I would have. That's what I would I would have guessed over the last eighty years that <laughs> something like that happened, and it never did. So it definitely. And then when you throw in there that Coach K's last game, right? And, I mean, that, you you can't make a movie out of it. No, it's it's going to be a remarkable atmosphere. That's that's for sure. Um, is it? Look, I think that the other side of the bracket might be kind of happy that Duke and Carolina are, are there because I feel like no one's going to talk as much about Kansas. No one's talking as much about Villanova. If it's possible for those two teams to be under the radar, they're under the radar this weekend. Oh, no, there's no doubt they're under the radar. And let's take it a step further. I mean, whoever wins that North Carolina game, I mean, you wonder, just like last year when, when, when Gonzaga won that, that epic game against UCLA mm-hmm. in the semifinals and they won on Jalen Suggs' you know, deep shot, you wondered how much are they going to have in the tank for, for Monday night. And I, I got to think that there's going to be so, 
some of that concern in this because this is such an emotional game. It's Carolina and Duke. I mean, it's just not another semifinal game. What is and, and it's the second game on top of it. What is the winner of that game, especially if it's a hard fought, you know, battle? Mm-hmm. You know, what's the winner going to have left for Monday night for you know Villanova or Kansas? Uh, you better be careful, Laugh. You almost you almost got into Pete Gillen territory with your Duke there for a second. So just I'm just saying, be <laughs> be careful, my friend. Steve Lapis, uh, analyst for CBS, joining us. You can catch his work all week long. CBS Sports Network. Uh, great crew of guys: Brent Stover, Adam Zucker. Uh, Wally Zerbiak, uh, all of our, our old friends at CBS are, are hanging out there, going to do a lot of great work. So uh, tune into CBS Sports Network all week long to get their thoughts. Um, Lapper, you, you saw Gonzaga up close and personal. Are you surprised that, that Arkansas got them and that they didn't not just w- not win a national championship but not really get anywhere close to a national championship? Yeah, no, I was surprised. I was surprised. I really did think, in a lot of ways, this Gonzaga team, certainly defensively, was the best team Mark Few had because of Chet Holmgren. Now, you know, maybe missing Jalen Suggs and not, and the, and the bottom line is really in the Arkansas game is Andrew Nemar didn't play well. He yeah. played great against Memphis, and the next week he didn't play well. So, were they missing an elite talent like a Jalen Suggs at that spot? That could be true. But you know, the one thing I will say, uh, Pat, is that. Whenever you get to the Sweet 16, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get there and you start playing quality teams, you know, anything can happen. And, and, you know, I thought thought Gonzaga had really learned a good lesson against Memphis in terms of playing against a helter-skelter team. And now here comes Arkansas. They're a helter-skelter team. They want to push you. They want to force turnovers. They want to get up and down. They want to make the game ugly. And they just couldn't do it a second time in a row. So, yeah, I was surprised, but... When you lose in the Sweet 16, it's never really a shocker. I, I did have to laugh when I was watching the Memphis-Gonzaga game, and every time Gonzaga would make a run, you'd be like, Penny, got to get a timeout. Got to get a timeout, Penny. And all I'm thinking is, you know, laps over their coaching. Like, he's, he's ready to go. He's in the coaching seat. But it was interesting to me because it seems like the NBA guys, like Hardaway, Jawan Howard to some extent, it seems like those NBA guys don't have the same sort of timeout patterns that we're t- we, we see typically in college basketball. There's a lot more of that, let me let these kids play through it. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you. Now, my per- now, they pay me for my opinion. Sure. So I, know, I, know, I know a lot of Memphis fans were, like, upset with me that, that I was saying Penny should have called time, timeout. And I, and I do believe he should have called timeout. And, and just because I say Penny should have called timeout doesn't mean I'm saying Penny's not a good coach. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it just you, – you, there's, there's all kinds of ways to do this thing. You know, uh, Bobby Knight's in the Hall of Fame. He wouldn't play zone in a million years. Uh, Jim Bam's in the Hall of Fame. He wouldn't play man-to-man in a right. million years. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do this, and everybody has different opinions. I, to, to this day, will always say that they should have called timeout because you can't let a team like Gonzaga get away from you. Mm-hmm. Because you know, the, you know it, when you know who the better team is, you got to know how close to the vest this team needs to be. So that was just my opinion. Now, no, I, it, I, I agreed with you. It, I was 100% he, in your corner. And if he called timeout, would he have won? Who knows? Yeah. You know, it might have been the same result, so we don't know about that. Uh, but, yeah, that was my opinion. Yeah, sure. Speaking of, and, and we're not going to really dwell on what happened, but I, I do want to – you were there for the Jawan Howard incident. But I want to talk to you about the emotion of coaches because – you know, you mentioned Bobby Knight. Everyone knows how emotional he was and his let his emotions get the better of him. Uh, you know, I've I've called basketball for 20 years now, and I've seen coaches get teed up for everything from you know, screaming and, and cussing and, 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 you know, saying something really quietly into the official's ear. What's that line that you have to tread as a college coach or a coach in general between – uh, you know, being emotional, letting your team see that you're in the fight with them and that you're there with them emotionally, but not letting it get the best of you. You know, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, the, the first thing is that this is an, ex- an extremely emotional game. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about bats. Any, any, any coach who's coaching any sport is so emotionally invested in it, it's hard really to uh, be in reality sometimes, and you need to. And uh, that's what the the, the uh, competition and the the, the 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 pressure and everything else will throw at you, and that's what it does to you sometimes. So yeah, there's a line you can't cross, and obviously Juan crossed that line. He paid the price for it. He was suspended for the whole year, mm-hmm. and then he came back, 
And, uh, you know, but there is a line that you absolutely cannot cross. And I always felt like if I'm if I'm up, if I'm up in a game and this guy wants to do something that uh, if I'm going to win the game for sure. Mm -hmm. And this guy wants to do something, whether it's press my walk ons or whatever, I'm going to give him a little latitude because he's frustrated. Right. And I got to and I got to understand where he's coming from, because guess what? What goes around comes around. He's in that spot now. I'll be in that spot tomorrow. Yeah. So I know how I would be. So I felt like, you know, great guard should, you know, and I know Juwan was pressing with 20 seconds to go. And Greg, I, me personally, I'd have let it go and just said, look, we're winning the game. I understand he's frustrated. The heck with it. Yeah. The, that's, that's me. The that's best The best be. emotion is the win uh, when it's all said and done. Yeah. Uh, that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, that's it. That's all that counts. The, the la last thing for me, Lap, and, and I talked about going into the tournament, how many great big men – there were in college basketball this year. And it seemed like everywhere you turn, there was a quality big. I mean, obviously we know Timmy and, and Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga. Purdue's got two quality bigs. You keep looking around college basketball like, man, Arizona's got good bigs. These, these all feel like teams, uh, Kofi Coburn at Illinois. And yet when you look at the championship, the final four, yeah, there's good bigs in there, but it's again, superior guard play that carries the, the day. Does it feel like we all kind of had to learn that lesson over again? That yeah, look at all these great bigs that are out there, but in the end, it's the it's the the one and two guys that are typically the ones that are going to find a way to win you games. You know, there's no doubt that the guards are the guys that are going to get things done. We know when the shot clock is winding down at the end of the clock, and those are the guys who got the ball in their hands, and those are the guys who got to create. But what I will say is, and I agreed with you all year long. I was saying, but this. This year for bigs is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Look at the Auburn, you look at the Auburn. Yeah, bigs, yeah absolutely. Bigs, all these guys that we saw, but we have to say this: Armando Baycott and Brady Manick, That's a pretty good four and five combination that Carolina's. Yeah. Doing. Paulo Boncaro and Mark Williams. That's a pretty good four or five combination. The other two teams, no, don't <laughs> have bigs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, David McCormick is a big, but he's an inconsistent big, and I don't put him in the class yeah. that I would put those other four bigs on the other side of the bracket. So I think what we have left is we have two teams that have really, really strong four and five positions, and we have two teams that, you know, not really four and five positions are strong. More perimeter play is going to be strong. So it, that's one of the reasons why it's such a compelling final four. <laughs> Lap, have a heck of a lot of fun down in New Orleans, brother. I know you will. There's there's uh, no lack of things to do and fun to be had. Uh, see you all week long on CBS Sports Network. I'm going to slip over there and say hi to you guys on set at some point. Uh, I'm, I got hogs for the cause all weekend, so I'm, I'm judging barbecue. I know it's a tough life. But uh, I make sure you do that. Yeah, Patrick. yeah we're going we're gonna to come down and at least say hello to you guys. Y'all have a, have a great week down there, brother. Thanks. You too. All right. Steve Lapis former Villanova head coach, now CBS analyst for uh, 